Amen. 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 But the Bible does say that your gift will make room for you and bring you us great people. So on today, I am honored and privileged to be here on today. I don't even worry about your vowels. I'm giving you the word, but it's not coming from the vowels today. Come on, come on, come on. I'm going to give you the fullness thereof. Amen. While I was sitting there, God gave me this. He said, I need you all to repeat after me. He said, Davine, teach us, teach us how, to turn apples how to turn apples into oranges. Into oranges. Teach us, teach us how, to turn how to turn apples, apples into oranges. oranges. And the apples representing everything in your life that has a stronghold. Come on, come on. Everything negative in your life. Uh -huh. Everything that was shameful in your life to you, to others it was nothing, but to you, it was a different type of pain on the inside that you could explain to somebody. And the orange is representing everything that is good, everything that is positive. You are next level. That promotion, that open door, that orange represents you busting through the ropes with your hands in the air saying, I did it. So somebody said, teach me, teach me how to turn apples, to turn apples into oranges. In so this story begins when I was in the seventh grade. Come on, come on. Pay attention because this is very good and very deep. Only the elite will understand where I'm coming from. <laughs> Amen. I'm in the seventh grade. I walk into my middle school. I see a box in front of the main office stood by this tall. I didn't know it was in the box. So I'm a little kid. I come over here and, I, and I'm tippy toeing looking down at that box. And I see canned goods in there. So I look on the front, and they said they was taking up canned goods for the less fortunate families. Okay. So I get in the class, and the teacher, they had an incentive, because sometimes people have to give you an incentive to get involved with stuff. You know when you have the youth program to get the youth involved so they'll come, because if they're not involved, they ain't coming. That's right. And you have to invite the other church choir to come sing, because they're not going to come unless they sing. Right. So you have to give people an incentive come on, to come. All right, all right. I'm being real with y'all. Yeah, yeah. right, right. So they gave us an incentive, and the incentive was, if you bring a can good, right. on, you drop man. it in this box, we give you a sticker. All right. And this sticker is your admission to the dance on Friday. So in the seventh grade, you already know. Lindbergh, I'm trying to be in the building. You already know. Stacey Adams and all, because I ain't had no sneakers. Mama done kept me dressed fresh. So I go home to, a, to my mother. I need a can good for tomorrow. But like most of us, her mother said, get out of her face. So here it is, it's Thursday now, it's getting serious. Mom been denying me since Monday. So it's Thursday, I know I have to have this can good when I get to school tomorrow, or I'm not gonna be official. All my friends got stickers, they holding conversations about this party, and I can't even indulge in the conversation because I don't have a sticker. Amen. Amen. So they asking me, man, you're not going, yeah, I'm going, where are you bringing your can? Oh, I'm just waiting till tomorrow, right? Amen. So here it is, Thursday evening, I asked my mama, she told me to get out of her face and threw a shoe at me. <laughs> So I decided I'm asking one more time on the way to school on Friday. And I got dressed. I went in there. Mom was trying to get ready for work. And I just whispered, Mom, can I get one more? Boy, get it. Can of pork and beans and get out of my face. I grabbed that pan of can of pork and beans, threw it in my book bag, and I dashed off to school. I get in there, I go to the teacher, give her that can. She tell me to drop it in the box, get my sticker, and I'm official now. So I'm walking around. I'm, I mean, I'm in a conversation now. You know what I'm saying? It's like you missed the game. You can't really talk about it because you ain't see it. So you're just talking about what you think you happened based on what other people said. So, but I'm actually in the conversation now. Yeah, we're going to do this. I'm going to holler at Shorty when you know, I'm talking. So Friday evening, I'm waiting to go to this party. It's like 5 o'clock. I'm sitting there on my couch chilling, counting down time. 7 o'clock, I'm going to be in the building. Then I hear this noise outside my door. I know what it is. I know I heard a car pulled up, so I looked out the window. I see my school van out there. The school van there in my house. I see a couple of cheerleaders jump out the van, a couple of football players. So I open up the door, then I see the back of the van open up, and I'm seeing the box from the school coming out the back of the van. And they carrying this box to my door. I'm in seventh grade. I don't have the fullness thereof up here. So I'm trying to figure out why is this box uh -huh. that was created for the less fortunate All right, come on. coming towards my door. All right, all right. So 
tell you the story was good, didn't I? Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. So I'm standing there. Mama! I'm calling on mama. She come around the corner. Then I see the principal. It's serious now. Am I in trouble? <laughs> and he tells my mother, on behalf of such and such high school, or middle school, we want to present you with this box as a token of appreciation from our school to your family. Now let me show you the difference between apples and oranges right here. My mama looked in that box and started praising God. I mean, she was shocking up something in it and looking. Because in my mama's spiritual realm, she said, I sacrificed one can and God sent back an overflow. Y'all should make extra noise on me because I know y'all really understand what I just said. She sacrificed one can and God sent back a box full because of her obedience on the last day. She don't know why she told me to get that can good, but she allowed me to get it and because she allowed me to get it and overflow came. Now it's oranges over here for her. But let's take a slow walk to where I'm standing. I'm in the seventh grade with the don't have the fullness thereof. And I am embarrassed. Yeah. I am ashamed. Yeah. Because they said it was taking up canned goods for the less fortunate family. Yeah. I had no idea that my family was less fortunate. Wow. Yeah. We didn't have food all the time. I just thought my man went to the grocery store. But my man talked to me about the financial That's right. internal affairs of our house. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out what is going on, Pastor. Yeah. So I'm embarrassed, I'm ashamed, and you know good well I am not going to that dance. Because those cheerleaders and those football players will be there, and I'm quite sure people already know that it's my family that's the less fortunate. So my mama over there with her oranges just having a whale of a time. I got a basket of apples, and I'm ashamed and mad and furious. So I didn't go to the dance. Didn't want to go to school one day. But unfortunately, I didn't have a choice in that. <laughs> but this is what God did when I got to school. Nobody said nothing. Nobody came to me. Nobody knew anything. Even the, the cheerleaders that knew that the boss came to my house, everybody just spoke to me and kept it moving. It was in my mind yeah. that the world was going to do something. It was in my mind. But let me tell you what I did that day when they did show up to my house. And I remember standing there and I watched the van pull off. And I watched everybody waving at me. I thought it was being sarcastic because I was living inside of my frustrations. But I took that same day and I took those apples and I froze that pain in my brain. And I froze it in my heart. And I said that I would never ever again be the less fortunate in nothing else in my life. And that's when I began to turn the apples into oranges because I didn't want it myself pity. I said that from this point on, come on, come on. they would never ever come to my house to help my family out because I did not know my family was suffering. I did not know that we was going through all this. But now that I know as a man in the seventh grade, because great is he that is in me that is in the world. And I knew that I had it within me because I had something that all young boys at my age at that time did not have. I had confidence. That's something that most black young men do not have. Yeah. I had confidence that I could do something greater than myself. So when I walked to school, 